A thought came to my mind this morning as I was doing my studies that I thought I would share with my subscribers on the website and on YouTube. As you know, the Vatican canonized John Paul II into sainthood back in 2014. This is besides the fact that his parents manufactured the gas that killed millions of Christians and Jews for Hitler, and he, John Paul II himself, was the salesman for the family business. But here's the thing. If you enter the word saint into any King James Bible software, you will find that it comes up 95 times. And the majority of times it comes up speaking of obedient Christians who were alive at the time they were called saints. So why is it the Roman Catholic Church teaches the only way to become a saint is to die first and then someone on earth has to declare you answered their prayers after you died? Well, it's because of the basic reality and the true biblical definition of a saint. They know the popes and prelates can't hope to have the fruits of a true Christian, and so they must come up with a way to con the people into thinking they are holy. For example, when Jesus walked among us, he did many miracles. He healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, raised the dead, cleansed the lepers, opened the ears of the deaf, and loosed the tongue of the dumb. After he ascended back to heaven, he promised to be with his people all the way to the end of the world. And after the promised blessing of the Holy Spirit fell on Pentecost, we then hear of many miracles from that day forward that Christ did through his apostles. Now, as we all know, the Vatican claims the popes are the successor of Peter the Apostle, right? And this is besides the fact that Peter was a married man. Still, they claim Peter was the first pope, and therefore they now stand in the exact same office of pope, wherein they too have all the power of heaven and earth to do as did Peter. But herein lies the problem. In the word of God, we see that Peter healed a lame man at the temple, and then one day after Peter prays, the Lord shakes the house where he and all the apostles are gathered to bless them all with the promised comforter. Ananias and Sapphira were slain by the Lord directly after Peter rebukes them for their sin. And prison doors were even opened by angels sent by God to release Peter from prison. And it even says in Acts chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the street, laid them on the beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities, round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. And yes, Peter even raised a woman named Dorcas from the dead. Now, I would like to make special mention that Peter cast out demons from people. But do you recall what happened to John Paul II in September of 2000? He and the head Vatican exorcist, no less, actually tried to cast a demon out of a teenage girl when she went berserk during a Vatican audience in front of many witnesses. The demon just laughed at the Pope and his head exorcist in the same way the demon laughed at the sons of Sceva in Acts chapter 19. If he was a true Christian with the same faith as Peter, why couldn't he cast out that demon? The Bible also lists many other miracles done by the apostles as well as a few more by Peter, but I think you get my point here. The popes claim to be the moral leaders of the Christian church on earth and the emulated successor of Peter the Apostle, yet not one pope in the history of the Roman Catholic Church has ever been found to have performed a miracle while breathing air on earth. And I mention the breathing aspect of this because the popes do claim some of their past popes and prelates have done miracles, and so they canonize them just as they did John Paul II. But that's easily seen as a farce because even though Peter was used of God to heal many sick people and even raise the dead to life, he did this before going to the grave. And so the false Vatican dogma that declares sainthood is only possible after death allows them to fake it very easily because they know they have no faith to do as did Peter. And so the doctrine must change to make them look good to those that don't read Bibles. However, we are in the very last days, and I have no doubt we will soon see some of these evil Vatican prelates performing supposed miracles. Satan will soon puff himself up through them so as to bring more people who don't read Bibles into the Church of Rome. And so, open your Bibles and get on your knees, because unless you have Jesus in the heart, wherein wisdom of real truth is given you to where you become part of the elect who cannot be deceived, the lies Satan is soon to display before the eyes of the lost, will be far too overpowering for you to handle, and you will bow before him as a God on earth. Thank you for watching. God bless.